For today's homework, we're going to take a look at the vis mode portion of Code Sculptor. This lets you visualize what's happening in the computer, basically in the execution space, as some of the video lectures have been talking about. So, so I've got here a shortened version of our clicker class and also a couple of methods that use this clicker class. And we're going to pop it into vis mode and we're going to be able to visualize what's happening in the execution space and how the computer works with classes and instances of classes and these instance variables or attributes that each instance will have. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and copy this code. I'm just going to highlight it and copy it. And over here on my buttons, you see one that says Viz Mode. I'm going to click it. It opens up a new window and it's got some instructions here. I'm just going to highlight like we do in regular Code Sculptor and delete that and I'm going to put my code in here. So it looks like Code Sculptor, but it's got an extra button here, this little wrench. And that's going to actually start the Viz Mode. So I'm going to click on it to start the Viz Mode. And you can see some arrows here. Nothing's happened yet because I haven't run the program. I'm going to go ahead and run the program. It's going to do its whole thing. And notice that it ended up at the end. And this is what it will look like at the very end. Let's start back at the beginning. So I'm going to click on Begin. And here I am at the very beginning. And you'll notice that the computer completely skips all comments. So the first thing it sees is a class. So I'm going to go through using this arrow one step at a time to see what happens. So the computer has started right here on the class comment to declare a class. And this is what it finds out. So here is the blueprint or the template of the class with all of the different, with the constructor and with the different variables that it's going to use. Here's all the methods. So everything that's happening. Notice it says it's functions, but we know functions inside a class are methods. So it's just having this global frame uh, called a clicker class, and here's all the attributes. Now we can hide these attributes just so that we have a little more space here, but just notice it's all it's doing is setting up the template. There's nothing else happening at this line of code. Now it's skipped all the way down to our actual first function. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so for this function, it pretty much skipped everything. It just says right here, it's got an arrow pointing that there is a function called third, and it's got two parameters. So here's my global frame again. And then we're going to go to the next arrow. And it's going to skip all the way to main. And so here's our reference to the main function. So this is just saying these are the things, the main parts of our program. We've got a clicker class, we've got a function third, and we've got a function main. And pretty much skipped everything else until we actually have it. So our next call, our next line of code here is the actual function call. So let's see what happens. Now the function main went up to the actual definition of main, and now it's going to go through the lines of code. So it doesn't do it until it's called. Okay, so our first line of main is to create an instance. I'm going to go ahead and hide these attributes because it's just a template. And we can see it at any time if we need to. But here I am in main, and you can see that it's highlighted right there. And the first thing it's going to do is create an instance. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. So from our global frame, we went from clicker. And we've created, and here's our class. We're going to create an instance. Okay, so here it is, and we, this is our clicker instance. It says it right there, and self is going to point to this particular instance, which we're going to call period five. And I'm just going to go ahead and hide these again so we have more space. So you can see. You can see that this particular period 5, it's starting with the init, it's doing the constructor. So whenever I actually create an instance, it's going to construct it using the template. And so here's my instance variable count. Okay, now it's not going to wor worry about any of the methods until they're actually called. So here is my instance, period 5, and here is its count. See, clicker instance. It's labeled very nicely. Now we're going to go to the next line of code. You can see we're going to create another instance. So I'm back in my, using my template again. Back from main. Okay. 
and I'm going to do a new clicker instance and it's creating it right now using the init and we give it a name period 8. So those two lines of code created these two things from main. I've got a clicker instance called period 5 and I've got another clicker instance called period 8. So over here is basically my execution space. This is what's happening right here. Now our next line of code is going to call the function third it's going to pass in as parameters period 5 and period 8. So notice how it pops up into here and it's going to show that it's going to be using these two in our execution space. So the first line of code in third is to do is call the method click on the instance period 5. So we're going to be coming down to here. Now since click is a method, it's going to pop up into the class. It's going to take a look at this function. So now here we are. It's pointing to our first clicker instance. And self is period 5. So it's going to point to this one. And it increments it. So you see how it went to 1. Okay, and now we're going to go to the next line of code. And we're going to do the same method, but this time with period 8. So it's coming up, coming up into our class because it's going to look at the blueprint for this method, but notice where it's going to be pointing. Now we're down here pointing to this clicker instance, and self is period 8. And it's going to increment. Okay, now our next line of code is going to do multi-click. So let's see where that goes. I'm going to come up here and take a look at this function, multi-click, and it has self and num. So self is pointing to the first one because it's period 5, and my num is 2. I've passed that in. And we're going to do a loop. So we, as we go through this, notice that x is now my variable for my loop. It starts at 0, and then it's pointing. And then it's going to come back, and I'm just going to go through this loop. Notice x is 1. And, it's, and this method calls this method, so you see how it's kind of bouncing around, that's why we've got another arrow right there. Okay, so we're just finishing this up, we did two clicks. And now I'm coming to the next one. And this time I'm going to do a multi-click for period 8 with 3. So I'm coming up here to multi-click. It's going to start, it's going to point to the second clicker instance. And I now have an x variable because I'm going to do a loop and it's going to come back up here to click. And it's going to, we're just going to be repeating this three times until it finishes. Okay, now we're going to come down here to period 8 and we're going to do an unclick. So it's going to pop up here and find the method. This time we're going to be pointing to the second instance because it's period 8. And I, and I decrement. Okay. Now we're going to go to period 5 and we're going to do a reset. It's going to come up here to this method. So this is what we're pointing. Self is period 5. And it sets it to 0. That's just what the line of code does. Okay, now we'll come to the next one and we're going to print. So I'm going to come here. And I print, I passed in period 5. And you see that right here, this is what would be actually displaying on the screen. So this is my execution space and this is my screen. And then the next line of code, I'm going to print for period 8. I'm pointing, going to point to the different instance now. So there it is, and this is the value argument I passed into the parameter. And you can see that I printed it right there. And we finished. Now I completed this call. I've completed this call. And I finally ended. Okay, so Whatever you go out of something, it's going to come back in and complete it and keep going. So 
why you have to be careful about calling main all the time. If main calls main, sooner or later it has to end and it kind of gets to be a little complicated. So you want to be careful about that. And the vis mode is something that can really help you click through it and visualize what's happening. So you might want to take a look at your clicker class, put it into vis mode, go through it step by step. And this can help you see what's happening between a class and functions and methods and how everything works in the computer and in the execution space. This would be a great one to try with your math tutor and with your two-player math tutor game. And any program, you can even go back and look at some of your other programs. But particularly when you're working here with classes, using the viz mode will, could be really helpful to help you figure out what's going on and make sense of all these different terms and new structures that you've been learning.